Yes, sir. Okay, well, what is the need to have LVM? Rakesh, can you help me understand like what is the need to have LVM? Logical volume. It uh... which is fine, but what I mean to say here is why do we need LVM? Uh -huh. When we can easily create partition and even the size of partition could be into terabyte or pentabyte. So why do yes. we need LVM? I don't know much deep inside that, but it's maybe the physical disk uh, in order to make a big disk or something like that by merging both. Or normal disk we cannot extend with the help of LVM, we can achieve that. Okay. So let us say we have a disk. This is a particular disk. And let us say the size of that this particular disk is 200 GB. At the time of installation, we thought to create a couple of partitions here. So let us say the very first partition here is so for example, the very first partition here is slash and we thought of assigning a particular disk amount of, for example, 50 GB. Second partition we thought to create SLS home. We assigned, let us say, 20 GB. Third partition we thought to create SLS OPT. And we thought to assign, let us say, 50 GB. Next partition we thought to create is, for example, slash where the size of this is, let us say, 70 GB or let us say 80 GB. So, entire disk amount is full, like 80 plus 20 equal to 100, 50 plus 50 equal to 100. Yes, sir. So the particular amount of this particular entire disk is utilized completely. We have nothing remaining. So if there is a requirement, let us say down the line, one year, two year, there is a requirement that this particular partition is getting full. And in this particular scenario, we need to increase the size of this particular partition, slash. So how can we do that? There will be another scenario. Let us say we are going to have another disk of 500 MB, or so let's say 500 GB. Now, that disk will be mounted separately onto some different partition. But it will not be practically possible to extend the size of this particular partition only. What we can do here is, let us say with new disk, we can create another partition, partition number 5. And that will be called, let us say, slash OPT1. We can assign, let us say, 200 GB space here. We can create partition number six. We can give it a name, let's say, as home one. But the actual partition, which was supposed to be extended, which was supposed to be increased the size of this existing mount point, that is not practically possible because we did not opt the particular methodology, which is known as LVM, logical volume manager. That is why. It is not possible to extend the size of any of these partition which are already available. Instead, what could have been done here is, rather than going with direct partitioning, we could have opted the particular way to manage disk, which is known as LVM. Logical Volume Manager. So how does that work? So rather than creating standard partition here, First of all, we will have a disk. Let us say the size of this particular disk is 200 GB. The size of this disk is 
200 GB, the same disk which we were utilizing last time. And now what we are going to do, rather than creating partition onto this particular disk, we will declare it as PV. PV stands for physical volume. What do we call it? Physical volume. This is the raw disk. The disk, which, which is this, this is equivalent to same. But we cannot create partition onto any physical disk. Now we need to have a logical boundary here, which is known as volume group. We will utilize this particular disk in order to create some volume group. Let us call it VG. VG stands for? Volume group. This is known as volume group. Okay, and what is going to be size of this? So 20. What will be size of volume group? So 20 GB. Okay, so let me tell oh, you. Sorry, what. Uh, 200. This volume group is going to have the size same as the size of this particular physical volume because right now we are going to add this physical volume into this volume group. A volume group, let us call it my wall, my volume. Size of this volume will be as good as this particular physical volume because we can have up to 256 physical volumes into a volume group. Like this is going to be like logical boundary. This is going to be logical mapping of these particular physical volumes. Now what we are going to do, the size of this volume group will be equal to PV. Of PV, size of PV. Like let us say this particular PV has size of 200 GB. The size of my wall is 200 GB now. Let us say going forward, I created one more physical volume and the size of that physical volume is 500 GB. So in that particular case, what will be the size of this particular uh, volume group? 700 GB. 500 plus 200. So now all the partitions, whatever we are going to create, these partitions will be created inside this my volume. So now what would happen? Let us say if we need to create a particular volume group like size partition here slash partition number one that will be created inside my wall. Let us say that it's less. Today we have size of that particular is 200, like 50 GB. Next day, we thought, okay, let us have another partition here. Slash home. Size of that is, let us say, 20 GB. So as and when required, because right now we are not creating the primary partitions. This is not a primary partition, but this is created on the top of volume group. This is created on a flexible mechanism which is known as volume group and within this volume group we can create multiple partitions and we can extend the size of these partitions anytime based on the availability of remaining size within this particular volume group are we clear with that yes sir yes rakeshi are we clear oh uh, yes okay very good so earlier the limitation was there in the disk which we had created and we had just extended to new file system or partition. So that is not uh, eligible for the extension. No, that is okay. not eligible for extension. Uh, yeah. So now okay. we're right now this that... particular partition we have created ah. as uh, inside this my wall, like volume group. Mm -hmm. This partition is known as LVM. Okay. So this LVM is always going to be created inside volume group. We can directly not create a particular LVM within physical volume. So this is going to be sequence. First of all, we need to create PV, like physical volume, then VG, volume group, then LV, logical volume. Okay. Okay, let us go ahead. So right now what we are going to do, we will go to this particular instance and we will try to attach one or two additional partition with this.
let us see whether it is mounted somewhere or not. Not mounted. So now what is what we are going to do? We can directly remove that particular partition from here. This partition, let us unmount it. So this is the attached successfully. So let us go back and see whether it is still available or not. Let us refresh it. Yeah, that is gone. Yes. But still, if you see the particular partition is available here. So what we are going to do, we are going to remove it. Otherwise, it will keep on adding unwanted cost. So where are instances running? We need to check the availability on AP South 1A. So now what we need to do, we need to create a volume. What is the availability on? AP South 1A. Okay, very good. Volume created. Now, what is the next step? We need to attach this particular volume with our EC2 machine, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Any name we can select, but this name may get changed inside our Linux machine. Yeah. Okay, guys, how do we check like, what is the disk associated here? F disk hyphen L. The message command we can run. Yes. Yeah. LSBLK? Yes, sir. And yeah. after that, to check whether it is formatted or not? BLK ID. BLK ID. Okay. So this disk is just attached, not formatted. No other actions has been performed on this particular disk. So what to do now? Now there is there is going to be a particular sequence. First of all, PV. Then after VG creation. And then after LV creation. Then formatting. Then mount. Then mount. These are going to be the sequence of it. So yes. what is the command to create PV? PV create. The command is not found. So we have to yeah. move to that. Install okay. LVM package. So what we are doing, we are going to install LVM packages. PV create. Yes, sir. Then disk name. Then disk name. Dev S X V D B. Is this the name? Yes. And in order to ensure whether it's already existing or not, we can run a command PVS. So it will list down the particular list of PVs. So what it is saying, PV create dev X V D B. Physical volume dev X V D B successfully created. Creating devices file, etc. LVM devices system.d. This particular file is just created, it was not available before. See the see that particular information, guys. LVM uses devices listed in this particular file. Incoming voice guys, just plus nine one nine.
Okay, guys. So what we are going to do, we are going to see that what particular uh, like dev name is added here, dev xbtv. Every kind of information like uh, physical volume ID, everything will be visible here within this particular file. Am I audible, guys? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So moreover, we can run a command pv display. This will inform us the particular information in more detailed manner. This is PV name, like physical volume name. <clears throat> this is volume group name because we have yet not created any volume group here. This is saying PV size. Allocatable, like can we allocate this particular uh, size to some LVM? No. PE size zero. Total PE, PE it means physical yes, extent. Yes. So there are different unit in order to measure the size. Okay. Guys, if you remember, we were uh, reading some information with the help of fdisk command. So, first of all, it is showing size in GB. Yes, sir. Then after in bytes. Then after in sectors. Do you read this information? Yes, yes sir. Okay, so the same way right now we are going to have we are, we are going to have another unit of measuring the size of any disk into physical extent. And guys, keep this thing in mind. This physical extent unit comes only in picture if we are utilizing or if we are talking about LVM mechanism, like physical volume, volume group, logical volume. If we are discussing about that particular matter, that particular thing, only then this particular picture will come. Or this particular size will come into picture okay okay so now what next vg create what is the name i can give any name to this particular volume group then after you want to define the size of pe physical volume for example by default the size remains 4 mb but let us say if you want to define here 16 mb you can define that so whenever these physical volumes will be uh, allocated, so the size of physical volume will be like uh, the size of physical extent will be 16 MB. And then after I can define the particular dev name, device name. XVDB. My wall successfully created. So guys, do you read any kind of information here? Everything like whenever P is written, physical extent, that is going 0, 0, 0. What if I run the same command again? What is the PE size? 16 MB. Total PE? 639. Free? Because no PE has been allocated so far. No physical extent has been allocated to any volume group. That is why it is showing as zero. Okay. <laughs> Once again, what we are going to see here, we are going to create LVM. And moreover, if you want to run command related to VG, you can see here, you can run a command VGS, volume group show, VG display, more detailed information you will get, like what is name, what is the format, metadata areas one, metadata data sequence number, VG access, read, write, VG status resizable, max LV zero, current LV zero, every information because right now we do not have any LVM created inside it. You can run a command VG scan in order to identify whether VG is working properly or not, whether it is in read only mode or read writable mode, everything you can check with the help of VG this command. Moreover, not only this, VG CFG backup. VG convert, VG extend, VG merge, VG rename, all the particular commands you can use here based on the requirement. If you want to reduce your volume group, if you want to remove your volume group, if you want to scan, split, multiple things are there. So whatever is the operation required, whatever you want to perform, 
you can easily execute the command with the help of like bg display the command which we executed bg create command which we executed vgs bg scan command which we executed before some time like this right so you can run any of the command whatever is required okay sir most of time pardon sir most of time which type of command we need in a company in organization okay. so majorly vg create vgs vg display vg extend these are the major command which we need to use in organizations and uh, yes these are the particular commands which we have to execute okay sir one question at, max, at max like uh, let us say we need to restore any lvm then vg cfg restore this is the command which we need to execute this one okay sir okay. one question i do have of you yeah please uh what ex exact use case come from the like uh, team in what instance we have to increase that bg group over there so for an example uh, i'm just telling from my side if the log of that uh, disk is completed so in that moment we have to increase the disk or what exactly the scenario will be okay so when we talk about that in which particular scenario we are going to utilize this particular mechanism or why do we need to execute these commands? What kind of requirement comes to us? So let, let us yeah. say WPS is a request that the particular size allocated to slash OPT is 89% full or maybe 92% full. And we are not in a position where that we can remove the data from it. Let us say the developers say that all the data, whatever is kept on this particular server, I cannot remove that. So now there is a requirement to extend the size of that particular disk. Now, what is going to happen? because we already know that data cannot be deleted and the particular uh, let us say there is a particular uh, mount point which is available here let us say slash uh, let us consider this slash opt it is 92 percent full data cannot be deleted so now the, re the requirement will come to you please extend the size of slash opt partition from 10 gb to 20 gb or let us say from 200 gb to 300 gb this way requirement will come to you they, they may raise a particular Jira ticket, they may raise a ServiceNow ticket, they may raise a kind of email request or whatever kind of like agreed method which you guys have in order to perform the practical, in order to get the things done. Request will come to you and now that will be your responsibility to, uh, to extend the size. But before extending the size of existing LVM, let us try to create an LVM first. Ah, uh, yes. LV create, obviously we are going to create LV. Because if you see, we executed first command PV create, like physical volume was supposed to be created. Then after we, we, we uh, went for VG create because we wanted to create volume group. Now we are going to create LV. So the same, same pattern is being followed. LV create hyphen N. What name? My LVN. Then after hyphen L means size plus two GB. Where from we are going to create it slash dev my VG my VG. my wall this is the name yes sir of my volume group so what to do here lvs lvm created once again lv display so this is the path of my lvm if you need to check where my lvm is created what is name my lvm what is vg name my this lvm uuid this is it read writable? Yes. Where, where it is created on Linux box one, when it is created. LV status available. What is size? 2 GB. Current logical extent? 
128. So if you if you calculate 128 into 16, that will become 2 GB. Right? Okay. Now let's format it. Sir. Yes. Sir, in real time, like based on the ticket, uh, uh, based on our requirement, we can do L LVM, sir. Like uh, without uh, any ticket or uh, without any approval, sir, we can't format the disk, sir. End of the day, if there is no requirement, why would you perform any operation? Second thing, let us say you are given a requirement to provide a latest operating system. So no one is going to say that whether you are going to create that particular OS installation on any LVM or directly on that disk. That will be your thinking. That will be your thought process. Because going forward, because you need to ensure this being like Linux admin, that someone may come and may ask me in order to extend the size of any disk. So at that moment, you need to create LVM. The person will require the operating system from your side but they will not inform you whether you are going to utilize LVM mechanism or direct file system creation. Okay. That will be your, your call. Okay. Now LVM has been formatted. Yes, sir. So if you see here, dev, mapper, my wall, my LVM, what is the file system type here? XFS. Okay. Let us try to mount it. Mount. So now LVM is mounted on slash data. Eight. Now there is a requirement. Let us say uh, some email or maybe some Jira tickets, some service now tickets comes to your bin. And the requirement says, please extend the size of this LVM from 2 GB to 5 GB. So how do we do that? LV extend. LV extend is the command. Name of the LVM. Iphone hyphen L means size. How much we wanted to extend? 3 GB. So rather than defining only 3 G, we have plus 3 G. So 2 GB was already existing, plus 3 G equal to 5 GB. Okay. This is this is 5 GB. But if you see here, it is still showing 2 GB. Why it is so? Because the size of LVM has been extended, but the particular size of file system is, is still the old one. Now there is a command xfs underscore growfs and then the name of LVM. Now see the size guys. Is there any difference? Do you see? Yes, yes sir. sir. This has been extended. Now yes, let us say if someone is going to ask you that please increase the size of this LVM to 15 GB. Now how will you do guys? Sir, why you use mapper, sir? This is logical mapping. Otherwise, what could have been done here is we can give the name like this as well. Okay, sir. Any of the way we can do. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, what it is saying? Insufficient free space. Let us see. VGS. Only 4.98 GB space is available wherein we are trying to add 10 GB. Yes, sir. So what to do now? So now we need to go to AWS once again. We need to again add volume. We need to again create a volume because obviously the third volume will be required. And guys, this is the beauty of, of LVM that as and when you want, you can create a particular volume. You can add that volume to uh, your server or your virtual machine. And then you can add that additionally created volume onto that particular server. Okay, let me show you that step by step. So I'm going to attach it.
So what is this? X V D C. Yes, sir. Again. So what we are going to do here? Disk name. Successfully. Right now there are two physical volumes, X V D B and X V D C. Yes. VG. Right now we are not going, we are not going to create VG, we are going to extend it. VG extend. extend. VG. VG extend my wall with this particular one. Earlier there was only one disk. L. But right now there are two disks available. Yes. Right? What was the earlier size? Six, uh, like uh, 10 GB. What is the current size? 19 GB. How much amount of this free disk space available? 14.97 GB. Now will this command work? Yes, sir. It will work. So guys, see, without mounting a particular volume onto any other mount point, because if you see what was the what what was the particular mount point name slash data which was supposed to be extended, we have extended it to fifteen GB. Why it is not showing still this one? Because we need to run one another command which is known as grow. XFS underscore grow FS, then the LVM name. Right now, if you see, there is a command. Just read this information. Size is 15 GB. This is logical extent size. Segment 2, like this particular LVM is lying on to two different disks. Because what was the size of both individual disks which we have associated with this particular server? 20 GB. 10 GB each. But yes. what's the size of this LVM? 15 GB. So it means this particular LVM is lying on two different segments of allocated disk, which means one disk is one disk is completely allocated. Just read this information. What is the like this is dev XVDC? Okay, let us go from here. XVDB, what is total size of physical extent? 639. Yes, yes, now, let us go here. XVDC, like what is total extent? 613. What is this value? Allocated physical extent. These, these are allocated one. These are allocated and these are free. Yes. Are we clear with that? Like, how does it work? Okay. Any doubt so far, if you have? Yes, sir. Sir, please explain uh, LV display command in last two. Yes, sir. In last two. Yes. Sir. After uh, allocation. Allocation. What is allocation? Inherit. And read ahead sectors auto. What does it mean? So this is path. LV name. This is volume group name. UUID read writable access. Yes. Creation time. The status is available. What does that mean? Like this LVM is available. You can you can start utilizing it. Open one. One LVM is open. LV size this current logical extent mm -hmm. like 960. Segments two, like this LVM is expanding onto two different disks. Allocation inherit. By default, this allocation comes inherit with the pattern mechanism of LVM. Read ahead sectors auto. Right now, like let us say as and when the particular file system size will be extended. So it will keep on reading ahead the all the sectors and the track and the particular allocated size. Automatically, there is no need to give any manual uh, instruction to, to this particular LVM. Currently set to this one and what is the block size 
what is the block device? Two, uh, two, five, three, column zero. This is the block device which is associated with this particular LVM in the backend. If you remember, I opened a file. Do you read that information here? Yes, sir. Yes. So it means whenever new physical volume will be added here, so this particular file will keep on appending the information. Okay. So system has its own mapping. So just read this information, XVDB and XVDC. You see this information one three five sir is it permanently mounted not yet, not yet So end of the day, there are different locations and overall the same de same devices are mapped there. So you can mount a particular disk by any mean and that is how the system is maintaining mapping for itself. Okay. Now I want to mount it permanently. How to do that? ETC. Start. The data file system is XFS. Fine. Yes, sir. Sir, I have a question. Sir, when we mount permanently mm -hmm. LVM, so we need to UUID. Not so, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Not necessary. We can mount with the help of uh, disk name also. Yes. But, sir, uh, when we mount a UU with the help of UUID, so, sir, why, why we, uh, what is the need of like LV UU, uh, VG UUID and PV UUID? What is the need? Why we create automatically UUID, PV okay. and VG? This is known as universal unique identifier. Let us say if there are 25 different volume groups created on a server. So, okay, let us say we can recognize by the name, but the system is always going to recognize that particular like uh, volume group with the help of this UUID only. This UUID is understood by the system itself. Okay, system. Yeah. Okay, so now we have seen like how to extend a particular disk, how to extend a particular uh, LVM. Are we clear with that, guys? Like how to extend a particular disk? Yes, sir. Yes. yes sir. Okay, now what next? What if someone deleted an LVM accidentally? Yes, sir. Is there any LVM available? No. But VG is available. And it is saying all the particular space allocated here is free. Now, the task here is someone has deleted this LVM. Someone means obviously like uh, within this particular session, I have deleted this LVM. But what if the requirement comes to you that, okay, please restore this LVM. 
there is a command that command name is vgcf uh, restore not cf cfg cfg yes sir cfg so guys there are files this particular file keeps on taking backup Uh, like uh, whenever any modification extend extension of LVM, whatever you do let us say we executed a command vgcfg like extend my wall vgc like xvdc so created before executing this command so you need to check what command was executed in order to delete the LVM. remember yeah are you getting it yeah, yeah. So this particular file is created before executing LV remove command. So what we need to do here is copy this because this particular file is being repeated once again. So we need to copy till this location because if we define like slash once again, then this will throw an error. This is the volume group name. What is this command doing? VGCFG restore hyphen F means from the file, this file. And what is the volume group? My wall. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So LV is available. Sir, which type of troubleshoot comes in organization related to LVM? Very rarely, please. but yes, if it comes, so you guys should be aware of it. Because see, right now we are in learn, we are in learning phase. So let us say if there is real situation coming in and you guys need to troubleshoot it, so you should not be looking like I have never I have never done it before. How to do it? Now guys, what does it say? The, this does not exist. But this is available. Mm, yes. But if you see LV status, not available. Earlier it was showing available. Now it is showing not available. Yes, sir. This is inactive. Inactive. Why is so? Because it is just restored from one volume group. That is why it is showing inactive. Now what is saying? Available. LV change to active state. Yes. And LVM name. Now do we need to format that? Yes, guys. Do we need to format that? LVM once again. Yes, sir. No. no. It's not required. Already we restored that in the same place. That is available. Whatever data you kept here, that data will be available here. Yes, guys. Now it's time for questions. If you guys have any questions, you can ask. Because see, like what we have seen today is how to create LVM, how to how to add another physical volume, 
how to extend volume group size, how to create LVM, how to format it, how to mount it, how to extend LVM size, how to utilize two disks under one LVM. Moreover, we have seen how to remove an LVM, like how to recover a deleted, deleted LVM. Moreover, we have seen how to activate or how to uh, change the status of an LV from inactive to active. This sort of thing we have seen, guys. So now you, you tell me, like, if you have any questions so far, then definitely we can discuss that. Sir, I have one note, sir, regarding HTS class networking, sir. Okay. Sir, let us assume that uh, I selected class B IP, sir. I mean, I purchase. Mm -hmm. And you also purchased mm -hmm. the same class IP, sir. Mm -hmm. okay. and, uh, and in BPC, we create some subnet range. Uh, you yes. and I created the same range, sir, like uh, in uh, subnet BPC. Okay. And then if we create the server, then you and I have same IP, sir. First of all, let me tell you very clearly, whenever you purchase an IP address, so it means that is going to be public IP address, right? Yes, sir. So two ISPs cannot allocate same IP because whenever you go to an ISP, because they already have a kind of uh, confirm the pool of public IP address. They need to allocate an IP address out of that pool only. So when both the ISPs have different IP pool, so how can they allocate the same IP address to, do, to different users? Second thing. Yes, this can happen. Like you create a kind of VPC. You picked a particular VLAN or you can call that CIDR the same as I have picked. So in that case, like you are going to manage your network and I'm supposed to manage my network, but there will be no connectivity between your, your VPC and my VPC. Sir, but uh, if we purchase class C, everyone have 256 IPs, sir, like... Uh, no, it has it's, some... it's not like that. So when you are talking about like you are going to purchase same class, so mm -hmm. let us say, you purchase an IP address such as you purchase a series of IP address, let us say 10 dot sorry mm. 193 dot 11 dot 0 let us say okay 23 21 dot 0 slash 24 you purchase this particular entire series so when the ISP has allocated these 256 iPad, 256 iPads to you, then let us say if I go there, so what kind of range they will provide me? 193.11.0 slash 24. So this octet will change. So I will be alloc I will be assigned this particular series, and you will be assigned this particular series. No one can ISP. allocate same IP, sir. The same series. So how, like, how can the ISP assign the same IP? That's what my question is, sir. Because only like a limited range of IPs, sir. There are lot of companies and lot of uh, so many requirements, sir. Like uh, multiple. So that, is, that is why IP IPv6 is there. Companies have started using IPv6 as well. Okay, sir. sir if IPv4 series completed, sir, then... So IPv4 series is still not completed, but that may get completed anytime. So that is why in order to ensure these sort of things should not happen. So companies have started utilizing IPv6. Okay, sir. Say they don't provide same set of I C I D H huh? No. Okay, okay, sir. Because for utilizing private IP address, we are uh, always free. But when we talk about that, uh, we need to get public IP address. So there are hierarchy hierarchies that who will be able to assign what particular public IP to their end users. 
प्राइवेट आईपी सर फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट है यस प्राइवेट आईपी सर फ्री ओके सर यस सर व्हिच टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन आस्क्ड इंटरव्यूअर रिलेटेड टू डिस्क मैनेजमेंट कैन यू गिव मी एनी आईडिया सर यस डेफिनेटली लाइक हाउ विल यू चेक फ्री डिस्क स्पेस हाउ विल यू चेक लाइक हाउ मेनी माउंट पॉइंट्स आर देयर How will you check like what folder is utilizing how much disk space? So D Y F N S H command we saw yesterday. Uh, one more scenario based question I told you that uh, let us say that we have a particular server where disk space is mounted. So how will you identify which particular folders are consuming most of disk space? Yes, sir. This sort of question usually comes related to disk management. Okay, sir. Yes. Sir, I have another question. Yes, please. Sir, uh, for example, uh, if we join any company, uh, first of all, they will create one sign-in URL, URL link, and they will provide to us like in Teams or uh, somewhere they will give. Then with that link, uh, we will join uh, like a username and uh, giving password. After that, uh, uh, we can like uh, create IAM policies or something. Uh, this is happening in companies, sir. Uh, am okay, I correct? Let me tell you what happens here is so if you are talking about small organizations, so yes, they they create a user for you, they assign you permission, and after that you start working. But if we talk about some uh, medium or big organizations, so all the organizations are integrated with AD, like which is known as Active Directory, or you can understand LDAP, which is known as Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. So a user is created in a centralized location. And then all the URLs which are related to one organization can be accessed with the help of same authentication method. That is known as SSO, single sign on. Okay. So let us say if a, if an organization has fifty different accounts or fifty different uh, URLs where a user has to log in, so user is not supposed to like uh, enter username and password into into all the different uh, URLs. To be authenticated, these are integrated with AD. Okay, so with that uh, single sign-on link, I I do some operations or I do some work, so it will reflect to our company or client. Yes, it will it will reflect there, and uh, most of organizations do not allow to log in on internet directly. So you need to connect via VPN in order to access company's URLs. So like what is VPN? VPN means virtual private network. Okay, we will discuss that later. Don't worry. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, because I don't have any work experience, so sir, that's why Not I am no asking. So see, as and when new concept, new uh, terms are coming, I will I will keep on explaining. Don't worry. Okay, okay. Thank you. Sir. So, any feedback for the session, guys? Yes, sir. Great, great, sir. Great. Sir. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so very much. Sir, sir, sir. What thank will be the next topic? So tomorrow we will try to see the process management, like process. how do we handle the processes. Sir, after completion of this Linux topics, uh, you can also please tell like uh, troubleshoot, sir, like uh, three to four years and what are the issues you face. With that. Okay. Please we explain. Sure. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Have a good day, sir. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.